everyone. Welcome back to your CAPM and PMP question practice. Five questions to start your morning. A really great, great way for you to lead up to the exam and just get a little bit of extra practice in uh, so you can pass that exam. There's five questions. I'm gonna be going through them for the first time as well and we'll figure them out together. Let's jump into it. We've got the first question. It is, you've been promoted from your role of a project manager into a portfolio manager role. How wonderful, what a wonderful thing. Uh, our portfolio is work grouped together to meet certain strategic business objective and it involves projects and programs. Yes, it does. Uh, projects and operations. Uh, yes, that too. Programs and operations. So all of these things. Um, yeah, I mean, this is the one. It's all of them. It's projects, uh, projects, programs, and the operations as well uh, that are designed for that strategy. So anything that's related to that strategy, that's what a portfolio is. Answer D, fantastic. According to PMI and its PMBOK guide, a portfolio includes projects, programs, other portfolios, uh, and operations managed as a group to achieve strategic objectives. Fantastic, let's look at question two. You're working as a project manager and created the cost estimate to bid on a government contract where the scope was set by the government, very common. Okay, so they, I mean, so this is a tender proposal. So maybe this is a procurement question. Your manager advises you to reduce the cost to win the contract by whatever means, but your analysis shows that reducing the cost estimate will make the project unable to meet the specified scope. Okay, so what should we do? Reduce the cost estimate and submit it. Uh, probably not because then it's going to just end in tears down down the track when we try to do the, the project and we can't actually finish it. Uh, it's going to be a terrible situation. Formally communicate to your manager about the implications of reducing the cost. Uh, that's a very good one um, because basically we want to be open and transparent, direct and collaborative. We want to basically be making sure that everyone is on the same page. Let's go with that one for now. Ask your manager to estimate instead. That, uh, let's, that won't go down very well. <laughs> I'm sure, the, and submit your estimate without reducing the cost. Um, I mean, then you're in a no-win situation there, really. And this is a tough situation, and you'll find yourself in these situations as a project manager. Um, but really, to be open and transparent and direct uh, is probably our best uh, court case here. Let's go with uh, letter B. Answer B, it's your duty as a responsible project manager to be accurate and truthful in your estimate uh, and to, to be direct and collaborative in your dealings with others. So that's fantastic. Let's look at question three. We've got work performance data, generally contains the raw facts and figures. That's right, so we've got data which goes into information, which goes into reports, and, uh, and all of those sort of go up into each other. Um, and, but the data is things like uh, start dates, you know, that raw information, just pure facts. The number of bugs, uh, spent cost, the actual cost. What is a type of work performance data? Okay, forecasted estimates to complete. Not that one because you need to, um, you need to measure it against something else. So you're measuring it uh, I don't know what that is, actually. <laughs> I don't know what that is. But you're measuring, you're using something else. You're analyzing it against something else. That's not it. Implementation status for change requests. Uh, so that's like a, uh, oh, maybe, oh, maybe. It's not really a measure, though. Uh, percent of work physically completed is a measure, and it's that raw measure, uh, raw data of physical. Yeah, I mean, that's promising, very promising so far. Status of deliverables. Um, the status is more of, you know, it has to be measured against something. So probably not, you have, you have to use, measure it against something else to create it, in other words, it's the status. So probably not that. These are really tricky ones, by the way. Um, so, you know, make sure you have a look into them. But basically for data, it's the raw, just the facts. So how much have we completed? Let's go with that for now, let us see. Okay, great, so it's let us see. And here we've got here, so the different types of work performance data. Percent of work physically completed, this is from the PMBOK guide, by the way. Um, and w quality and technical performance measures, start and finish dates, so pure facts, number of, cha number of change requests, um, but not the implementation status. So a status is more about information, that's why, okay, that's why. Number of defects, actual costs, actual durations. Wow, okay, that was a bit tricky. Uh, let's go to question four. As you work on projects, they can be influenced by many different things and many different enterprise environmental factors, our EEFs. And you'll see these in almost every single project management body of knowledge process as well. What sort of influence uh, are marketplace conditions on your project? Uh, external, that sounds promising. They're not internal, they're not regulatory, and they're not public, not really, that's not really the name for it. Uh, let's go with letter A, that's a nice easy one. 
Yep, fantastic. Although external factors are not under your control, that's true, they still impact our project. So we have to be aware of them every single time we come to work, market, the marketplace is still impacting our project. So we have to be generally aware of it and make sure we at least have one eye on that while we're working on other things as well. We're up to the last question. How are you going? Hope you're doing well. Question five, you have recently been promoted from your role as project manager to a role that manages a group of related projects and ensures efficient use of resources among those projects to ensure they're delivered. Uh, so we're looking at not the functional manager, not the project manager. Mm. Portfolio would include operations as well. Uh, the program manager does multiple projects. Um, so that's probably the most promising one. Let's go with letter D. And the answer is D. The project manager role rel, uh, ma manages related groups of projects to ensure fish effective management and resource allocation. Fantastic. I hope this has helped you in your PMP exam journey and your, your um, preparation and your CAPM exam preparation as well. I absolutely know that you can do this if you keep studying and keep practicing and keep looking at these practice questions every single day. I completely believe in you and I know you can pass the exam. I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.